Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sanis of FanDuel. We're here to talk about some of the players that are rising in training camp, or their EDP is rising thanks to their training camp performances. What's going on, Jim? It's all good here, Greg. It's been tough to try to decipher who should be on the rise and who shouldn't because there has been limited information coming out of training camps. You have to dig pretty hard to try to find some of this stuff, but when you see consistent blurbs about different players, I think that's a time where it's more okay to buy in. So we're trying to focus on guys who have gotten those consistent, positive uh, positive blurbs about them to try to see if we can buy in to increase roles for 2020. It's super tough not having our own eyes watching preseason games to figure out who we like and who we don't, who's going to get usage and who's not. We're just using blurbs, like you said. And yesterday's blurbs on the internet were saying that Devin Singletary fumbles the ball a lot and that Devin Singletary is not going to really score many touchdowns and that Zach Moss just keeps looking awesome. So you know whose ADP is rising? Well, that would be Zach Moss. ADP sits now at 82.7 uh, at the moment. And Moss is somebody, he's a early round draft pick. I know, I remember every Bills fan being excited, then every fantasy fan being like, oh gosh, we thought we had this thing with Devin Singletary, Frank Gore was gone, and now we don't. Zach Moss, a running back whose ADP is quickly rising, Jim. Yeah, honestly, the fumbling is kind of just a cherry on top here for Devin Singletary because Zach Moss was getting positive blurbs even before that. And it wasn't because of his early down work. I kind of assumed that Zach Moss would get early down work for the Buffalo Bills. What we want in fantasy football is high leverage touches. That means touches near the goal line and touches in the passing game. And Moss has gotten a lot of positive blurbs for his work as a receiver out in Buffalo. So I think the odds that he winds up getting passing down work are getting higher. And that's why my impression of Zach Moss is getting higher as well. I had assumed going in that Devin Singletary would be that passing down guy because he looked pretty good in that department last year. But now if Moss is going to get both touches near the end zone and through the air, that's a lot of value for fantasy football. So yeah, uh, people are getting excited about Zach Moss. He's going earlier and early in drafts, but I think that's justified. And I'm still okay getting him where he is currently going. I have him to pick 83 right now in my ranks over on numberfire.com. He is right at pick 83 and ADP. So I think that he's going where he should. And if we continue to get positive news on him, I am not opposed to bumping that up even more. Zach Moss climbing in ADP. Maybe it's not thanks to Devin Sittles there is fumbling problems, and it's just the usage that ultimately Moss will have. But who really knows? Because we haven't seen him in any games or any team in any games. Josh Allen, to me, still probably seems like the guy that's going to get the most goal line carries of anybody, kind of like Cam Newton in his prime. But we'll see what happens with Zach Moss, with the Buffalo Bills, coming up in just two weeks. Next player we want to talk about who is rising up draft wars is tight end TJ Hawkinson. Now, Hawkinson is an interesting one, right? Because he started draft season super high. Everyone looked at um, their they has rankings, and you looked at stats from last year, like, this guy's going to break out. And then he comes out and is like, yeah, I'm not 100%, and I haven't been for the last six months. And you're like, oh, my God, this sucks. And now... The more training camps you read, you go back to the blurbs that you mentioned, and it's all been positive for Hawk. Now, he hasn't said he's healthy, but it's all been positive news surrounding TJ Hawkinson. Naturally, his ADP is rising again, and probably as it should be. 131 is the number you can get him at right now. Would you rather have TJ Hawkinson at the moment or Noah Fan? I was just looking at my rankings this morning, Greg, so I was kind of curious about that, too. And he's going right behind Noah Fant, and I do have TJ Hawkinson literally one spot ahead of Noah Fant. So they're basically in the same tier for me, but Hawkinson a tiny bit cheaper, so I think that Hawkinson does make a lot of sense. And they do check a lot of the same boxes, so I understand why you were asking that for sure. But I think the thing that's interesting about Hawkinson is that we kind of knew the role was going to be there because he played a good role last year from a snaps perspective. He was on the field a lot for Detroit as a rookie. So we didn't have to look for the same things from a camp perspective as we usually do for these later round tight ends. For these guys going later in drafts, we're trying to make sure they're going to be on the field playing snaps. For Hawkinson, that was already baked in. So to see the positive blurbs about him dominating as a, as a pass catcher in camp, that's what draws me in here. It's not the usual thing you want to look for in training camp news, but I think it does make sense with Hawkinson, given that his role was already going to be really good. J.J. Zacharyson of Number Fire did a study this offseason about breakout tight ends. The thing he found was that uh, tight ends typically were in their second or third seasons. They were tied to good quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford is healthy right now. That's a good quarterback. And they had roles the previous season. 
TJ Hawkinson checks all those boxes. He is also athletic, which JJ found is important too. So Hawkinson fits the profile of a breakout tight end. He's getting positive blurbs in camp, and we already knew he'd have a role in this offense. And yeah, I mean, Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones are great, but like, there's still targets on the table to be had in this offense. So TJ Hawkinson at 131 makes a lot of sense. If he gets too, uh, if he gets the enthusiasm gets too high, I think that Noah Fant is a great target as well. But for right now, I will take Hawkinson over Fant given where they're currently going. Yeah, I read JJ's article as well, and I got all excited about TJ Hawkinson until, until he told me that he's not healthy, and that is kind of what has scared me away. That's why I moved Noah Fant up one spot ahead of Hawkinson in my rankings, and that's kind of the direction I've been going in. But you're telling me Hawk's healthy. You're absolutely right. There are targets to go around in this Detroit offense with Matthew Stafford, a uh, more reliable quarterback than Drew Locke at this point. Hawk had the game last year where he was awesome, and then we kind of forgot about him. But like he has the ability to break out as long as he can stay healthy. That's the number one question. That's what we're looking for. But Hawk certainly has the ability to really preserve, pro- provide major value, especially going at this spot in the 130s. One last player to chat about here, and it's funny because last year at this time, we were going through your drafts, and I wasn't sure who the number two wide receiver in Green Bay was going to be. So you know what I did? I drafted both of them, I thought. Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Geronimo Allison. I think by week five, I owned none of them because it didn't matter who the second wide receiver was in Green Bay. They weren't successful. Alan Lazard came on toward the end of last year, and people got behind the lizard as somebody that, hey, maybe it's Aaron Rodgers' second favorite target. Who knows? Now we go into training camp. We go into the regular season not really knowing who the number two wide receiver in Green Bay is again. It's not Geronimo Allison because he's not there, but it can be Marquez Valdez-Scantley who had positive information surrounding him this week, or it could be the Lizard. Alan Lazard, his ADP right now is 150.8. It's costing you nothing in drafts. I'd like to say the upside is high because Aaron Rodgers is throwing him the ball, but it doesn't seem like the same Aaron Rodgers or the same Green Bay offense we're so used to seeing. But when it costs you nothing, Jim, it's probably worth taking a shot, right? Yeah, I mean, what's the downside? There really is no downside for Alan Lazard because where he's going, the floor for most players there is non-existent, so you might as well go with a player who has a role in a good offense, and it seems like that's exactly what Lazard will have. All the the buzz from camp has been that Lazard is running with the first-team offense consistently, kind of confirming what we saw in the playoffs last year. In that final game against San Francisco, once he was a bit more healed on that ankle injury, Lazard played 92% of the snaps for Green Bay in that game. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise to see his snap rate with the first-team offense be as high as it has been in training camp thus far. But he's also getting another year in this offense, another year of experience there in Rodgers, and like you said, he's still going to pick 150. If you can get a guy late who is six foot five, has decent speed, and is tied to Aaron Rodgers when there's not a ton of competition for targets, I find that really intriguing personally. So sure, you know, you could question Lazard's ceiling because Devontae Adams is going to get probably 30% of the targets in that offense, which is an absurd number. But if Lazard can carve out like a 20% target share, like an 18% target share in that offense, I think that could be intriguing. There are concerns because Rodgers' play was not as great last year. Maybe they want to be a rush-heavy team. There are legitimate reasons to be concerned. But when when the draft capital is so low tied to Lazard, why not? Why not take a chance on him and see what he can do? He is a guy who has talent. Aaron Rodgers has praised him just this week again. So I think that it does make sense to roll the dice on Lazard, see what happens, and then proceed from there. You're just looking for upside in the back end of your draft. And why not go to Green Bay? Why not go with Aaron Rodgers? Because the other choices probably aren't nearly as fun. Maybe Alan Lazard can become that next great wide receiver with Green Bay. And if he doesn't, you can drop him and it won't feel so terrible. Jim Sonis, we appreciate the time. Good luck with everything this weekend. Same to you, Greg. Definitely appreciate it. Looking forward to talking to you once again on Monday. Absolutely. I, I feel like, and I have no idea what the schedule says, but I feel like we probably should talk about some training camp fallers after today's episode. Does that make sense? I will take that in consideration and take it up with the powers that be, which are technically kind of me. So sure, that sounds good to me. Fantastic. Nice and easy. For Jim Zanis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have an awesome weekend, everybody. Enjoy your drafts. Good luck. And Jim and I will see you back here on Monday. Thanks for watching.